five bold predictions of the 2019 NBA free agency. Remember, these are just bold predictions. If you want my actual realistic predictions, I have it on the screen right now. And I made a video where I explain why I think all these guys will go there. That was two days ago when I posted that. So if you want to watch it and you haven't watched it, I recommend go watching that because that is more realistic. So these are my bold predictions and let's see if any of them transpire. Let me know yours in the comment section down below and be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new and let's get into the video. Number one, Isaiah Thomas returns to the Boston Celtics. In 2016, when you thought of the Boston Celtics, you thought of this man. In his 2016-17 campaign with the Celtics, Thomas averaged a career-high 29 points per game while recording 6 assists, shooting 46% from the field and 38% beyond the arc. Since then, he's only amounted to 44 games in the last two years, most recently with the Nuggets where he averaged just 8 points in 15 minutes. Now he's an unrestricted free agent. He has the choice in where he wants to play, and it doesn't seem likely that he'll go back to the Nuggets. But it also doesn't seem likely that the Celtics will target Isaiah Thomas due to their ambition of Kemba Walker. But let's just say that plan fails, somehow, which it doesn't seem likely, but if it does, I wouldn't be surprised if they settled for a guy like Nikola Vucevic or even a DeMarcus Cousins big man, and they would still need a point guard obviously, and whilst there are a few options the Celtics could go after, and the obvious one just bringing back Terry Rozier, why not go after Isaiah Thomas? Not as the sixth man, but as the starter. You would have a lineup of Isaiah Thomas, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, you can probably bring back Marcus Morris, and then you could have a big man such as Demarcus Cousins or Nikola Vucevic, and that is actually not a bad squad if Isaiah Thomas could play anywhere near how he played in 2016, 2017. It's just a thought to consider. I think we'd all like Isaiah Thomas to return to Boston, and even just to return to a little bit of his former self. Remember, this is just a bold predictions. The Celtics will probably end up with Kemba Walker, but we've seen strange things happen in free agency. Number two, Julius Randle to the Phoenix Suns. See, I know the Suns are really targeting D'Angelo Russell, and he's a good friend of Devin Booker's, but so is Carl Anthony Towns of the Timberwolves, and they actually have a chance to sign him too. Plus, there are many other teams like the Lakers, Pacers, 76ers, and many other teams that also want D'Angelo Russell. So, if the Suns lose out on D'Angelo Russell, having a guy like Randle mixed with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton may not be a bad option or a bad fit at all. I would say that Dallas has a higher chance to get Randall or even the Brooklyn Nets, but I do believe that Dallas will try to get a guy like Al Horford or DeMarcus Cousins, and therefore the Mavericks may not go after Julius Randall. Likewise with the Brooklyn Nets, I think they're going to go after Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and if they get those guys, then obviously Julius Randle will not be a fit in the Brooklyn Nets. So if they don't get him, the Phoenix Suns could be a team that sweeps in. It's definitely an intriguing fit. Julius Randle in the end may just be the piece that finally pushes this young Suns core out of the basement of the Western Conference and allows them to attract some potential free agents next season. The best case for the Phoenix Suns in my opinion is they end up with a starting five of at the one Terry Rozier, at the two Devin Booker, at the three Josh Jackson, at the four Julius Randle and at the five DeAndre Ayton. And the worst case scenario is probably they end up with another top 10 pick in next year's NBA draft, but it is about time that they get Devin Booker some help before it gets bad for them. Number three, Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat. If you didn't know, you're about to find out. Jimmy Butler is and has been for a very long time reportedly been very interested in the Miami Heat. Unfortunately for both parties, cap space has been the big issue. So far, all rumors surrounding Jimmy Butler have been rumors about what the suitors want which are the Lakers, Knicks, 76ers. They're the teams and they're the suitors for Jimmy Butler. But what does Jimmy Butler want? According to NBA writer Tim Reynolds, the four-time All-Star is very interested in the Miami Heat. And this gives us an indication of where he may want to play next season. He has also stated that he'd be very interested in LA for both teams, the Clippers and the Lakers, and the Houston Rockets. LA, of course, would be the most likely destination as they are the team that actually has cap space, unlike Miami and unlike Houston. But this is a bold predictions video, so let's talk about the other two teams. Much like what the Houston Rockets need, Butler would be a guy that could fit in with that team alongside CP3 and James Harden. As for the Miami Heat, they just want a star player that can help them advance in the Eastern Conference. In the end, if Jimmy Butler does want to go to the Houston Rockets or the Miami Heat, Butler would have to force the Sixers into a sign and trade with the Heat, 
or the Houston Rockets. Whilst the preferable scenario to trading him to either place is keeping him, Miami may actually possess a couple of young assets worth asking for. But the Houston Rockets are seeking to trade Clint Capella, PJ Tucker and Eric Gordon in exchange for first round picks so they can potentially perform a sign and trade for Jimmy Butler and that was posted by ESPN. But why would the Philadelphia 76ers want that? The Miami Heat can offer players like Josh Richardson, a player that has emerged as one of the best perimeter defenders in the league and his offensive game is steadily improving. He's a guy that can definitely hit the three ball and would be a good fit for Philly, honestly. He's just 25 years old and he has two years left on his deal between 10 and 11 million and a player option for 2021-22. So that's a really good contract and a guy that would fit very well with the 76ers. The second guy is Bam Adebayo. He's another player to consider, and while he hasn't quite lived up to his lottery status, he has been a solo contributor to the Miami Heat, and he'd be a very solid backup to Joel Embiid, or even to play as a starting power forward if they want to run both players. He's just 22 years old, and they say the big men take long to develop in the league and he's only on the third year of his rookie deal. James Johnson would be another guy who actually is a very solid player and he'd probably have to be in the deal to make the contract situation work out. And if Philly asks for even more, the Miami Heat may have to even throw in Tyler Hero, their first round pick of this year's NBA draft. Now, some may say that Miami is losing this trade, but you have to think about it like this. Miami has Pat Riley, and he's a guy who owns the winning philosophy. He rarely brings up draft picks and develops them, and people know that about him, and he's even stated that himself. Although he has stated that that's what people think of him and that's not the case, when you look at history, it is really the case. There hasn't been a lot of draft picks by the Miami Heat that have stayed and stuck around apart from Dwayne Wade and a few other players, but they've ended up being shipped off to future teams. Or I can take some assets and some young players and turn them into Alonzo Mourning. And I think we all know, Pat Riley is a guy who looks towards free agency. So developing these young players, and we've done this four times now, had a good group of players, young players, and then either through free agency or, or through a trade brought the superstar in. And he even said when the deals come off the books in the summer of 2020, they are ready to pounce. Riley said he will be targeting two max free agents when that time comes around. In 2020, uh, we'll have uh, a lot of room. We'll also have the possibility to have enough room to go after two max contracts. And we're going to do that. So, so we're planning that 2020 will be the room year. The thing is, when I look at the 2020 NBA free agency, I personally don't think it's an amazing free agency. So right now, if I'm the Miami Heat and I add Jimmy Butler, my lineup of 2019 would look like this. At the point guard, Goran Dragic, a former all-star point guard. At the two, Jimmy Butler. At the three, Justice Winslow, who has the potential to improve even more. At the four, Kelly Olynyk, a guy that can space the floor. And at the five, we still have Hassan Whiteside, who would be happy if he can actually get playing time. And in my opinion, that is not a bad team to enter the 2019 season and challenge with in the Eastern Conference. And then you still have a max spot in the summer of 2020. Given the choice between a deal or re-signing Butler, re-signing Butler is the easy decision. But if it isn't the 76ers choice, the Heat might have more of an offer than the Houston Rockets. Number four, D'Angelo Russell to the Philadelphia 76ers. I actually posted this in my predictions video, but this was my boldest prediction out of that entire video. So I'm also putting it in here too, so I can explain it. Russell is a 6 foot 5, 198 pound guard. And yeah, I said guard because he really can play shooting or point guard. He is a definite combo guard in the NBA at this point. He's a guy who's a great shooter, but he's also developed into a pretty solid passer and he would be comfortable in playing his game off the ball or on the ball too. This means he can play next to Ben Simmons and we have seen it before. I mean, just look at their time together in Florida when he and Ben Simmons won a pair of high school national championships as the team's top two options. Together, D'Lo and Ben Simmons went 45 and two, vaulted each other into the conversations to be the top two draft picks in 2015 and 2016. A lot of people don't actually know this, but so were Russell and Joel Embiid. Well, for a little bit, before he later transferred to Rock Academy. Now, they didn't ever actually share the court at the same time, but the duo clearly became friends over their time together, as you can imagine. D'Angelo Russell on a four-year contract to the Philadelphia 76ers would mean that they have a young core and a big three for many, many years to come, 
And don't count out that Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Kevin Durant big three. This one would be very similar. They are all so young. And number one, Kawhi Leonard joins LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Literally, Kawhi Leonard and his rumors have been the talk of the town recently. Originally, it was Kawhi Leonard staying with the Raptors. Then it became Kawhi Leonard's potential chance to join the Lakers. And then it now is Kawhi Leonard's potential chance to join the Clippers with another star player like Jimmy Butler. So we don't know where this is going, but as a bold prediction, let's say he joins the Los Angeles Lakers, because that is the boldest of predictions. But every day, it does seem more likely it could happen. Imagine if you heard this though, straight after Kawhi Leonard won his NBA championship. You would have been like, come on man, he's not going to leave this team and join LeBron James, Anthony Davis, are you serious? But this is seriously a bold prediction that could actually happen. First, the Lakers freed up max cap space, which was soon followed by the news that Leonard would actually grant the Lakers with a meeting once free agency began. Then word came down that he specifically wanted to speak to Magic Johnson, and that LeBron James and Anthony Davis would also recruit Kawhi Leonard as well in a private meeting. Finally, later on Friday night, the Lakers title odds started to move up, quickly followed by the latest report of Mark Stein, who made it sound like many around the league are starting to think that Leonard may be a Laker as well. There's a lot that we don't know but what we do know is that he really wants to play in Los Angeles one way or another but ultimately I don't know if it's gonna happen and at the end of the day the Raptors have the last say they have the last meeting could the Lakers get Kawhi or do you think he will sign with the Toronto Raptors at the end of the day or do you think he'll go to another team or join the Los Angeles Clippers and let me know if you think the greatest big three of all time will happen in LA with that said, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, hit the notifications, follow me on Instagram, and enjoy free agency. I am out.